<sighs> okay, so I'm going to go straight through the codex from front to back and go over every unit that, if you watch the overview, I consider to not be complete trash. So, um, starting off, the Dark Eldar Lord. Um, I'm not going to go through any witch cult rules or witch cult stuff um, with the first run through of the codex. I'll do a separate video for witch cult after I'm done with all of the individual units. Um, so starting off with the Dark Eldar Lord, there's two kinds. There's the Dracon and the Archon. The Archon is the improved one. Things like improved weapon skill, initiative, wounds, um, ballistic skill, um, attacks, all that kind of stuff. Um, still is wearing 5 plus armor. Basically armor printed on t-shirts. Um, the real... Uh, there's only like a 25 point difference. So most of the time if you can afford an Archon, you want an Archon. Um, basically the typical loadout that you want to give your Archon... Assuming you're not playing like 500 points or something like that, usually the bare minimum I give him is a shadow field and some sort of power weapon. Um, if you don't give him a shadow field, he will die so quickly. Um, 5 plus armor save is simply not enough. A shadow field, um, for those of you who don't know, is a 2 plus invulnerable save. And as soon as he fails it once, it's gone. So, most of the time, that'll protect him until he gets into combat at the very least, and if he gets a ton of attacks put on him in combat, he'll still survive through the first round or two, which is usually enough Which is usually enough to kill every single thing he's in combat with. So, um, uh, what is an ideal um, loadout for the Dark Eldar Lord is you want the Shadow Field, you want combat drugs. Combat drugs are the next one that I always, always take. And um, I usually give him a power weapon, either a Punisher, a straight-up power weapon, um, an Agonizer, or an Animus Vitae, depending on my points, my opponent, that kind of stuff. Um, the Agonizer is really nice because it always wounds on a 4+. Plus. Um, the unfortunate thing about the Agonizer is that it always wounds on a 4+. Plus. Uh, what I mean by that is if you give him something like a Punisher, it'll be um, t uh, Strength 4, so against Marines, it'll wound on a 4+. Plus. And against Griblies, like Guardsmen and stuff like that, it'll wound on a 3+. Plus. You can use Combat Drugs to up his strength and make him wound on a 2+, plus against those things. So if you're going to be fighting lots of things like... Uh, if you're going to be fighting, I don't know, let's say the, the Great Unclean one. You're fighting Nurgle, that kind of stuff. Then the Agonizer might be a good idea. Um, if you're fighting Space Marines... Um, or pretty much anything, any, so if you're fighting Space Marines, anything Toughness 3 or 4 as the base for the army, then you're pretty much going to want to go with the Punisher instead. Um, the Punisher is a Strength 4 power weapon, requires two hands. So you take the Tormentor Helm, which allows him to basically use a pistol on, from his helmet, which gives him plus one attack. So, um, uh, the basic loadout, Punisher... Tormentor Helm, Combat Drugs, and Shadow Field at the very least. Sometimes add in Haywire Grenades if you're fighting a lot of vehicles. Um, and that's pretty much all he really needs. There's some other little things you can give him, but a lot of them don't do anything in the new, in the new rules. Um, so let's quickly go over Combat Drugs. Okay, there's six different things you can... There's two different types of combat drugs. First of all, there's combat drugs that you take for individual characters that only affect the character. And then there's combat drugs you take for entire squads, like witches um, or the Reaver jet bikes that they come with. You don't have to buy them. They come with it. You roll on it, and it's random, and they get that one for the whole game. The ones for the individual characters, you choose every assault phase. Um, so the combat drugs, you can make a 12-inch assault move in 3D6, pursuit or fallback. Um, you can get plus one weapon skill, plus one strength. I always strike first regardless of cover or weapons. Reroll any misses in close combat and plus one attack. So you can choose any of those six with the individual characters. You can choose as many of those six with the individual characters. Um, the downside to choosing a lot of them is that for every one you, you use that round, you have to roll a die. You take six of them, you roll six dice. Um, any doubles, you take a wound with no saves. Um, if you roll triples, he's just plain dead. So I try to limit it to three or less. Um, if I only have one wound left, I'll usually only take one. Just because the last thing I want to do is kill him trying to kill the opponent. So um, 
It all depends on how you're using him, but usually I'll give him ones like the plus one strength, three roll misses, plus one attack, that kind of stuff, um, to give him as many attacks and to get as many attacks to go through as possible. So um, that's combat drugs, which are fantastic, by the way. They're worth all of their 25 points. Um, so again, typically go with the Archon. Um, I usually give him a retinue. In thousand point games or lower, I will usually consider putting him with a warrior squad and a raider instead of a retinue. Um, but as far as retinues go, he can take up to a total of 10 incubi um, slash 10 warriors. Um, you can take a combination of the two as well. Um, so what I usually do is I usually do 5 incubi. If it's a really large point game and I can afford it, I might just load up the whole thing with incubi. But usually, I'll do five incubi, um, four warriors, so that with the Lord join, they can fit in a raider. Um, and the four warriors are basically a meat shield. I can put the first wounds on the warriors. Because the warriors are only eight points, incubi are 25. So um, I put the first four wounds all the time on the warriors, and the warriors can take two splinter cannons. Um, splinter cannons are awesome in raiders, so... Um, I would suggest every single time you use the Dark Eldar Lord, um, unless you have a whole ton of points to throw around, um, Lord with a Punisher, a Tormentor Helm, Haywire Grenades, and a Shadow Field, um, and Combat Drugs, and four Warriors with two Splinter Cannons, uh, five Incubi, if you have a lot of points to throw around, an Incubi Master, upgrade one of them, give him Combat Drugs, and that's it and a raider. I usually leave the dark lance on there, but disintegrators can be really good too. Just make sure you still have enough lances to take out things like land raiders. Um, so that's a typical HQ squad that I run. So that'll be this um, entire video there then. Um, Incubi, just so you guys know, are bloody amazing. Um, three plus save, which is unheard of for the dark Eldar. <laughs> um, even for the Eldar, it's pretty rare. They have uh, Strength 3, Toughness 3, like a usual guy does, but they have a, the Punisher, which is the Strength 4 Power Weapon. So you can basically have an entire squad that's Strength 4 Power Weapons that get plus 1 attack, um, so 3 attacks on the charge. And they have a really good weapon skill. Um, ballistic skill is the same as the Dark Eldar standard, but their weapon skill, 3 pluses on Marine, so keep that in mind. The Incubi can be upgraded with assault weapons like blasters and that, but you, you, I wouldn't waste them. I wouldn't waste the power weapons on it. So, this concludes the video for the Dark Eldar Lord and his retinue. Um, I will be doing looks like the witches next.